Hi, let us go to the second part of this um, element of absorption costing, which we looked at, okay? So the costing techniques, which we are looking at, we've dealt with absorption costing, but we looked at purely an absorption costing scenario for a production setting. What about a service organization? What drives their operations? You all agree with me that service organizations are normally driven by the hours that people work or that people put into the work that they do. So let's take a typical scenario of an of a service of a service sector or a service organization where we need to absorb the cost. Okay. So like I said, mostly these service organizations are driven by labor hours. Okay. If an accountant it is the number of hours that I'll I'll key in that is what I'll use in billing my customer. I'm a lecturer, if I'm teaching, is a number of hours. So if we have, let's say, 100 lecturers in the business school, and we all work, let's say, 35 hours a week, and we work, let's say, 300, uh, let's say 40 weeks in the whole year. So to get a total number of hours we have worked in the business school at the, at the department, it is simply the the 100, 100 employees times the 35 per week times the 40 weeks that we work in a year, right? So quite simple. Let's take an example. Say a business has six employees, they work 35 hours a week and 48 weeks in a year. So in getting the total number of hours that this service driven organization works, we multiply the number of employees to the number of hours and then the weeks. So we get 10, 0, 8, 0 hours in total for the whole year. All right. Now let's look at the business overheads for the year, the indirect cost overheads, rent and rates, electricity, office admin, total overheads is 37,200. So in order to get the overhead recovery rate or absorption rate, we, we, we divide the total overhead cost 37,200 by the 10,080 to get 3.69 per hour. All right. So we'll use this 3.69 per hour and charge it to every job and add it to the direct cost. Okay. So after all of this is done, we can then add a markup or some uh, uh, percentage to get our selling price so that we can also get some, some profit. Right. So let's look at this typical example. A, a small company firm, accounting firm, operates with five employees, each working 40 hours per week for 50 weeks, right, of the year. Office overhead is 120,000. The accountants charge 80 per hour for their services. That is direct, direct labor, okay? A client file took 3.5 hours to complete. So the direct charge is the 80 times 3.5. That's a direct, okay? Let's find the indirect. Okay, so the direct is 80 times 3.5. So if you if you get if you do it 80 times 3.5 is the direct charge, 280. That's the direct labor cost. All right. Now the indirect, you have to find the five employees times the 40 hours per week, which is 200, right? Multiply it by the 50 weeks. How much do we get? 10,000. And then divide it, divide the 120,000 overheads by the 10,000. So you get 12. All right. Then we then multiply these 12 per unit for the overheads, which we have found the indirect, against the file, the hours that we took to work for the client. So again, 3.5 times the indirect cost absorbed, the 12, and add it to the direct, the 280 that we got. Okay. That will give us something around 330, 322. 322, okay. So you can try the second one. A factory has only one department with total overheads of 10,000. Um, straightforward, okay. Total labor hours, 2,000. You can easily find. Divided 10,000 by the two, you get the absorption rate. How much does it take to absorb if it spends 2.5 being in the department? So you have this. What answer you get multiplied by 2.5? and it should get something around 12.5, um, okay. So you can do those calculations and see what you get, okay. Now, it is also useful to prepare cost cards. You know, anytime you go for any service 
you want any service provision, mostly they'll give you a cost card. These cost cards will break down the total cost of product or of the service or of the customer order. And then this is what we use in determining the what goes into the product or the service we are giving to you. And also a little something to give us some um, profits. So add up some markup, a percentage to, to get your profits, okay? So note carefully, an organization who wants to remain competitive in the organization must always make provision for some non-production cost to ensure that these costs are covered. So if there is any other cost which helps us to run indirectly somewhere, please cover it up. In, in the cost of the product so that you can remain competitive in the market. But just a note of caution down there that there are a lot of pricing decisions in the short run. We have long run and short run pricing decisions and each organization can adapt to different strategies in order to survive. So there's a distinction there which you can look at on a whole topic in terms of organizational pricing decisions. So in preparing our costing statement, we add up all, so there's something we prepare that somebody, some will say job cost order, okay? Costing sheets, job order, anyone. It still goes into what we call the costing statement. In building our costing statement, we add all the direct costs together. The sum of all direct costs give us the prime cost. We then add the indirect production cost. And then when we add it up, we get the cost of production. Then we add the other indirect non-production non cost, which gives us the total cost. Then we add a simple markup margin, the percentage to give us a selling price. That's what we put up there for the organ for the company, for the client, for the public to pay. All right. So you see the price to be 45. It has gone through all these analysis to ensure that there is some profit component to ensure the company survives. Right. So take an example of the flying Z. Um, guitar, okay, so let's see, direct materials, 500, direct labor, 800, add it to get the prime cost, then the department one absorption, department two, we'll take a typical example calculation for the belly caster and then we'll do an, a calculation. So let's take these illustrative figures for now. Let's assume office and admin costs are 10% of the prime cost. So keep that in mind, we'll use it in our next calculation and analysis. So mark up 20%, so if you have the total cost to be 2592.5, find 20% of it, which is 518.5, add it up and you get 3111 as the cost of the flying Z, right? Excellent, let's go on. So let's say a customer has ordered 20 belly casters, prepare a job cost card or a costing statement based on um, what we have. Remember, we said 10% is considered as office and admin cost. 10% of prime cost is the office and admin cost, all right? So let's build a costing statement. Fly, uh, belly caster, not flying Z, right? So 20 belly casters, 20 belly casters. So material will be what? 20 times 40, as you see over there. Labor will be what? 20 times 60, right? For department one, overheads. Indirect production overheads, okay? Um, it is 60 times 20. And then the painting finishing department is 27.5 times 20, okay? So if you take the solution or the illustration here, you get a figures there. So the material cost, like I was mentioning, multiply the 20 by 40, prime cost 20 by 60, you then, uh, like direct labor cost 20 times 20 by 60, sorry. So you get 1,200 add them, you get 2,000, okay, as a prime cost. What about the indirect production overheads? Use the absorption rate, which we're giving 20 times 60 again, okay, for carpentry, giving us 1,200. And then for department two is um, 27.5 times 20 belly casters, okay, which gives a 550. Five, so add it up, we got cost of production, prime cost, we are prime cost, 10% of prime cost, is assumed to be the cost of office and admin expenses. So we add it up 200, and then we get a total cost of 29.50. Find just 10% markup. We are assuming profit or markup, not 20% in the initial illustration, but 10% of it. So we get a selling price of belly caster to be 43.45. All right. So alternative approaches could be used, right? Alternative approaches could be used. Let's take this example again. 
a transport sector company, okay, this guy or this company has one bus. It operates 350 days per year. It covers 180 miles on the average per day. There are two drivers which cover each day. So for each day, somebody comes half day, the other person goes the half day. Then they park the car in the garage, right? They receive 50 per day. Fuel cost is 0 0.30 per mile. And garage cost is 10 per night. Remember, the car will be in the garage for the whole year, but it will work on the road for 350 days, right? So the garage cost annually, should be for the whole 365 days. Whereas the others, we can only consider the real time that it works. The company pays 4,000 annual repair costs and 2,000 for insurance. Suitable units of service, the question is which one should we use? Cost per high, do, we high, do you find any information about hiring there? If they want you to use hiring as a cost driver, you find it, you clearly mention it, okay? If it is cost per hour, you can clearly find it. In the information given cost per mile you clearly find it so we are being told let us determine the cost per mile so we are using mileage as a driver okay the cost driver okay in operating these services so take a clear look at it how many staff do we have in preparing the costing sheet two staff they get 50 per day they work for 350 days you get 35,000. fuel cost was 0.30 okay per mile for 350 days multiply it you get 18900 garage cost is 10 pounds per night but the garage cost as i said the car will be in the garage for the whole year right so 365 days annual repairs is 4000 insurance is 3000 when we add it all up we get 64550 so in order to find the annual mileage is 180 on the average per day but we use it we use the vehicle on 350 days not 365 so multiply the mileage per day used against the number of days which the vehicle worked 63000 so to get the cost per mile in absorbing it what do we do divide the total cost we've had 64550 by the 63,000 mileage covered in the 350 days that the vehicle worked. Markup, let's assume it's 20% markup, all right? So we get a cost per unit or per mile is 1.03, and then we find a 20% profit, you get 0 0.21. So the charge per mile will be 1.24. So if you wanna hide this vehicle, what we will tell you is that per mile, we are going to charge you 1.24. So if you wanna use it for you are going to cover 300 miles. This is how much we will charge you, 1.24. And this 1.24 will take care of all the costs that we incurred, insurance, repairs, garage, fuel, and then the, the, the staff who have been working on it, and yet we will still get some 20% profit from this 1.24. Interesting, interesting. Let's move on. So take a simple analysis here. Um, I'll give you the hint, possibly. I'll ask you to just work through, okay? Just work through. A small local college has 20 teaching staff earning 35,000 um, annually, okay? Annual admin and running cost 250. What is the cost per student? If 750 students are enrolled. Go through and see. I can give you the hint. The answer will be between C and D. C and D. So work out and see what you get between C and D. A local hospital employs 50 doctors on average salary of 100 per year, 150 nurses at average salary of 24,000 per year. Admin and support costs are 8,000, 8 million. If 20 patients are admitted and spend two nights, what is the average cost of hospital bed per, per night? So I can give you the hint. Roughly, it looks um, between 415 and 830. Yeah, but work it out. Maybe you get an alternative answer, right? And then we can discuss it during the live sessions. So you've realized that we can assign costs. And there are some problems associated when we are allocating costs or when we are absorbing costs. Okay. We can also easily calculate the cost when we know the approach to use. If it is a single unit, easy to do it. But when we have some multiple or, or different lines of businesses or different lines of products, 
then we need to go to the two-stage approach, okay, in, absorb, in absorbing the cost. And we can easily apply this process cost, this process of absorption costing in order to get an overhead absorption rate. Apply some simple um, percentage to get some profit, and we can always build a costing statement or cost cards, right? Now, I've left this again. We have about 10 key concepts you can look out for and try to understand them, as we said always at the end of the session. Before we end, let's go on to one more thing, okay? What we have done looks basic, quite basic, not sophisticated. It is quite simple, so it's easy to work it out. But there are situations where it could be complex, okay? Activity-based costing is used for situations or in scenarios where building the indirect cost into the product or service could be complicated and complex, right? Now, traditional absorption costing is appropriate for goods, for, for products, for services, which are similar, which are mass produced, and which have a simple production process. But for business processes, which are complex, we normally use the activity base because they are all driven by activities, all right? Now, let's take, let's, we're not going to more calculations because activity-based costing is the whole thing on its own, right? But let's just introduce you to the concept. So it is an alternative method of absorbing cost or cost allocating cost, okay? Allocating cost, let me use that term. More sophisticated, more complex, okay? The product is determined by a range of activities necessary so activities necessary for production. Frequency of a cost driver reflects the level of activity. So we are always almost interested in the levels of activity to determine the cost. The amount of activities will reflect how complex the business activity is. And so ABC is used by management to improve our processes to identify areas where we can do away with wastages and then build some production efficiencies. And what it does is that it helps organizations to produce more accurate cost of product and also build up a very accurate selling price for products which are different, okay, differentiated products. Let's take this example. We are dealing with carpentry department and painting department. That's what we did, right? For the absorption, we just use these two and then we just find the hours and then allocate them per hour. Very easy, straightforward, right? But in activity-based costing, we ask ourselves, in carpentry department, what moves it? What are the activities within? Material orders, material set, machine setup, sanding, finishing cost. These are activities that drive the carpentry. For the painting division, we're looking at spray arm filling, quality control. So these activities, we need to allocate the cost to each of them, not to the departmental level. So you find the cost per unit for machine setup cost. And that is what we use in absorbing the indirect cost, okay? So it is consistent with the modern production process where we get the input resources, primary resources, and then we convert them as output to the customer using the activities or the processes we have to, to convert these raw materials to the finished products, okay? So it is quite interesting. Let's take this analysis and see. If the product is a single product, simple, there's no differentiation in the product. We produce only chairs. Simply divide the overhead by the number of units. And then you get the overhead per unit, right? Overhead cost per unit. If we have two or more products, the processes are few, few departments involved. There are no product differentiations. We are dealing with belly caster, guitar. We are dealing with flying Z, guitar. No differentiation, use absorption costing to identify the indirect production cost that will be included in the product cost. But if we have two or more products, they are not simple. The processes are not few or simple. They are complex and all the activities involved are varied. Differentiation in terms of product is high to medium. We use activity-based costing, right? So both activity-based costing and, and, and um, absorption costing follow two-stage approach in assigning cost to the department, okay? So activity-based costing we use as two-stage approach to assigning this indirect cost to the department. But note carefully, activity-based ABC will use the cost divided by the activity. Absorption costing will use the rate by the cost by the 
the hours to get the rates. Okay, so activity based ABC, like the name sounds, we use activity driven. All right, good. So take a quick answer. Let's take a quick quiz and then let's see how we get which of the following statements are true regarding absorption costing. Absorption costing uses a two stage allocation process system. It's true. We found it, right? Absorption costing is less complex. That is true than ABC, but more accurate. No, it is not more accurate than ABC, right? Absorption costing is less complex than ABC, yes, but less accurate, yes, that's true. Absorption costing is most suitable for products with high degree of differentiation, no, no, not for high degrees of differentiation, right? That's for ABC. Which of the following statements are true regarding ABC? ABC usually has more activities than absorption costing. You will agree, yes? ABC is more accurate than absorption. You will agree but less complex, no. ABC is more complex. ABC does not use a two-stage approach, no. ABC also uses a two-stage approach, okay? So that statement is not true. ABC is more suitable for products with high degree of differentiation, perfect, right? So that's it, very easy to understand and very easy to get it. So I will also, I will kindly suggest that try and find the work, the tutorial questions, okay? And when we meet, we'll go through the, workshop solutions, the tutorial, the case study under the costing method. Very easy, the questions are very easy. Nothing is so complex, okay? And trust me, management accounting is lovely. It's very lovely. See you, thank you.